Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today I want to be going through question 5.3 of the 2020 Physics Paper 1 because there's been quite a bit of confusion around this question. There seems to be two conflicting answers. One is 8.8 .8 and the other is 12.35, I think. And I can understand the confusion here because the first time I did this question, I made an error and I got the answer of 12.35 because I didn't make my WNC negative. But now that I've seen that and I've gone through the question a few times, um, I can safely say that the answer is in fact 8.8 .8, .8, and I'm going to show you now why. So for the question, I've basically um, just written down all the salient features of the question here and I've omitted the diagram. And there's a reason I've done that because I'll show you later, some people have tried to use the diagram as a proof that 8.8 .8 can't work. And I'm going to show you how that's, how you can't necessarily interpret the diagram in that way. So we'll work with just the written information we've given. So we know the formula um, that we're going to use for energy principles here, WNC equals delta EK plus delta U. And we know we've been given that WNC in this case is 3.4 times 10 to the 3 joules, but it's going to be negative here. That's the mistake I made the first time when I did this question. I forgot about that negative over there. So delta EK over here, you're supposed to calculate in the previous question, and you should have gotten negative 1,200 joules. And now this delta U bit, that's going to be MG into H final minus H initial. So we can simplify that down here equals negative 1,200 plus. Our um, mass is 200 here and G is negative 9.8 as per your formula sheet. So that's going to be 9.8 into H final we don't know. That's what we're solving for. So HF minus HI we know we've been given that 10 meters above the ground. So that's 10. Now if you open this up and you solve for HF in this case, you get HF equals 8.88 .88 meters. However, if you omitted this negative here and kept it positive, you would have got an answer of 12.35. However, you're supposed to use a negative, and I'm going to show you why um, this answer is correct using my second method. So I'm not such a great fan of the WNC equation because it's not as intuitive as I'd like. And I prefer to use, just go and use the law of conservation of energy and use an equation and work it out myself. So basically in a situation like this, what I do, I'd say zero because the sum of everything you add up in a closed system when you're dealing with energy is always zero because it stays constant. And then I'd say equals half MVF squared, so that's the final velocity, the energy associated with that, plus the energy associated with the height of the object at its final point, um, point B in this case. And then I'm going to add here our 3.4 times 10 to the 3, our force of friction. And why am I doing that here? Well, basically, between points A and B, the block is moving, but it's also undergoing friction. So during its movement there, it's going to lose energy that we need to account for in our equation. And that has to be added to this final bit because the total final bit here, would, if we didn't add it, would be less than the initial if we hadn't added this, if we hadn't accounted for the friction. So then we go ahead and subtract the energy initiated in, um, associated with the velocity at point A, mvi squared, and we also subtract um, the potential energy uh, with respect to um, its height at that point, so mgh i. Now, if we put in our relevant values for this equation, we have half into 200 into 2 squared plus 200 into 9.8 times our final height, which is unknown, plus 3.4 times 10 to the 3 minus a half into 200 into 4 squared minus 200 times 9.8 times our initial height of 10. And if you solve for h in this case, you also get a final height of 8.88 meters. So you can see from two methods, 
um, albeit very similar methods because they encompass the same equations. It, it's just the layout is different. And I um, like this layout a bit more because it shows exactly what's happening to that 3.4 over there. Now, a lot of you have tried to point out that 8.8 .8 over here doesn't make sense because then this triangle here wouldn't be a right angle triangle because um, from the following information that we're given, we can calculate that that's 10 meters over there. And from subtracting 22 and 8.8, .8, um, you get about 13.2 over there. And a lot of you have pointed out that this side is bigger than this side, which is the hypotenuse, so this can never work. However, you have to understand that the diagram that we've been given is just a guide and doesn't necessarily impact on the wording of the question because you just have to deal with the values and the information you've been given. The diagram is just an aid and it might not be 100% accurate. And you also have to remember that when we're dealing with energy principles and conservative forces, they don't depend on the path taken. For example, delta EK doesn't depend on distance between points. It doesn't depend on the difference between heights or the distance taken. All you need for delta EK for energy is a final velocity and an initial velocity. And the same goes with delta U. If you have a point here and a point over here, and you do a straight line between them, delta U is the same as if there was a point over here, a point over there, and the path taken was somewhat convoluted. As long as the difference between um, these heights is the same, it doesn't matter on the path taken, um, the energy difference is going to be the same. So coming back to our question over here, we aren't specifically told that between B and C, we are dealing with a straight line. For all we know, there could be a curve like this going up to C. And that wouldn't change anything in terms of the equations we've been doing or any of the numeric calculations. It would just change how the diagram looks. So the thought that 8.8 um, .8 violates um, the laws of a right angle triangle, while it seemingly does um, seem like it's incorrect, um, you have to understand that the diagram we've been given is just an aid and it's not um, truly representative of the path the roller coaster might take. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this clears up any misconceptions that people have been having around this question and it ends any debates that have been going on.